This is Reese here, uh, boxing guru. Uh, we're down in Sheffield today at the Ingle Gym, uh, down in Winkerbank, and we're here with Scotland's first ever world amateur champion. It's uh, Willie Hutchinson. How you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm all right. How are you? Yeah, not so bad. Uh, not just bad. seeing you go through your paces there. Uh, yeah. How are you feeling after that one there? Feeling good, yeah, feeling good. We're, uh, we're a tough session, were not it? Yeah. Shoulders are burned. Yeah. It's getting ready for in the next few weeks. Yeah, so, fight. so next fight, um, do you want to just tell everybody about it? Where is it? Yeah, you it's fighting? in Leicester. It, my fight's in Leicester on the 23rd of February. Um, boxing on Anthony Yard undercard. Um, and just another fight. Good get my first fight of the year. And yeah. just get the ball rolling. Like I said earlier, you're Scotland's first world amateur champion. Yeah. Uh, you had a really promising amateur career. So what was it that made you turn over so early? What made you not really want to go down that amateur route, the Olympic yeah. route? Um, I believe, to be honest with you, I'd done everything I ever wanted to accomplish in, as amateur boxing. Right. Um, winning the Scottish, British, European and World Championships. And I didn't believe that there's any more I could have, I could have go on and win. Yeah. The Olympics, that was in a few years' time before I went professional. And anything can happen. You've got to qualify. You've got to do this. You've got to do getting GB, mm. all that stuff. And mm. I just professional is something I wanted to do. So that was always the ultimate goal. That was always the ultimate anyway. goal. And my ultimate goal was to become an amateur world champion. And thank Did God, it. I've become an amateur first world champion. Ever as well. First ever for Scotland. Yeah. So yeah. Some of the grandkids, kids, isn't it? Yeah, it's <laughs> it, isn't it? Just tell everybody at home, like what what's your style? How how do you like to fight? What can they expect to see when they see you in the ring? Depends on the opponent who will fight. To be honest, I adapt to all every every different style. I mean, I think I'm good at adapting and just getting the job done. Really. So you can scrap and you can yeah, box. Yeah, I can scrap. I can box. I can, can punch. Tear up. I can punch you a bit. Um, what's your record at the minute? If you don't mind telling uh, me, guys. Six and zero with four knockouts. And the amount of interest, amateur. You, um, I had 75 amateur fights, 165, and I had 47 international fights for Scotland. I beat four world champions, I beat seven European champions, I become world champion. I also, in the, our tournament called Nikolai Pakalov tournament, I come second as the youngest entry in the whole tournament, over 400 boxers. And I got yeah. beat off the Kazakh who got to the finals of the senior worlds. My hardest ever fight being the Cuban world champion who won the U the worlds the same year I won them at 81 kilo. I won them at 75 and it becomes for me and him to get best box of the whole tournament in the world championships. How and come runner up. And the Cuban and got it. And I, I beat the Cuban a few months before that and he yeah. got it. So obviously you've got all these amateur accolades. Um, with that has obviously brought you to attention of some big names and... An interesting fact, you're managed by big name in boxing, US manager Shelley Finkel. Yeah. So how did that come come about? How did, did you get in touch prior to your turning pro? Or? Um, in the World Championships, there was a scout. And out of the whole World Championships, there was over 300 boxers. I was the only one to get chosen right. by the scout. Um, his name's Mirko Wolf. He was the person that got the yeah, all no, this started Mirko Wolf. for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Mirko got me and Shelley, got Shelley in touch with me. And we met in London. We all went to London, had a meeting, and he wanted me, and that was it. That was it. He was yours. He was mine. <laughs> the US connection. Is there any plans to fight in the states? In the yeah, future? basically once or twice a year. Hopefully, hopefully get a fight in in America this year. Right. When I don't know, but it'll be good to get out there and start a fan base over there as well. So you was previously with Haymaker. That's who you started your career with. Yeah. And um, you was down in London. What was the reason behind the move to to, to, to leave Haymaker? Me, it was just my manager. Um, I left it all down to him. Right. They never done anything bad to me. They were more than nice. Yeah. And they just done what my manager told me to do. Do you feel that decision? Obviously, I think obviously you do. You've come up to, to the Winkerbank gym. It's, yeah. Um, it's it's one of the most famous decision. gyms in the country. Yeah. yeah. I think it was the best decision I've ever, well, I've ever been told to do. Yeah. And it's come to you and met Dom and the lads in the gym. It's been very mm. good. Um. Having sort of world class sparring at your disposal, um, yeah. so you got Liam Williams. He's moved up to middleweight now, um, and obviously you got Billy Joe as well. I know we can get heavy in between fights as well. Anyways, we're probably near enough your weight anyway yeah. in between fights. Um, what's it like just having that that, that sparring there at your disposal? Like, what What have you learned? It's unbelievable, isn't it? Um, every day's learning day in the Winkerbank gym. Um, yeah. Every day's learning day. Uh, just. It champions bring on champions, doesn't it? And iron sharpens iron. And I'm course, only yeah. young, I'm only 20. And mm. I just keep watching and learning off the people like Billy Joe Saunders, yeah. Lee Williams, ba uh, Kid Gallagher, people like that, you know? You just watch and learn and you just all that is for me is progress. 
Yeah. Every day is I'm progressing more and more and more. Yeah. Watching the people like that, they're the people I want to be. Yeah. And that's the person I'm gonna become. And, and I th- then I think there's always a cycle in in the Ingle Gym where it was always the Nazis, the Johnny Nelsons. Yeah. Then Kel Buck come through. He was coming up, and then underneath Kel, you had yeah. like the kid Galahads and yeah. thingy. And now obviously. And there's always someone hungry coming in. Yeah, the gym, yeah. And I'm hungry. That's what I'm I mean. Really hungry. And you're, you I'm obviously are gonna be the star of the future. Well. That's a plan and I'll be anyway. Stars of the of the future yeah. after that under you. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. They've all believed in me. Yeah. They believe in myself. So what can't stop me? Yeah. Not gonna stop you, mate. But yourself. That's it. Basically, what's the plan for your career? I mean, <clears throat> would I know you obviously you've got your long term goals, um, which we'll discuss. But in, yeah. in the short term, I mean, what what direction would take your career? Because a lot of fighters these days sort of they're quite happy to sort of skip that traditional. British Commonwealth yeah. the European route to sort of climb the world rankings and take a world title shot mm-hmm. I mean would you like to take the traditional route would you like to win a British belt outright or would you would you just go straight for the world titles whatever my team wants me to do to be honest I don't really care right. um, as long as I become world champion whatever route that is yeah. um, it is what it is if my manager and Don wants me to fight for the Commonwealth, British, European and World, and that's the way it's got to be. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if I go for the Intercontinental way, that's the way it's going to be. Yeah. And, yeah, it's whatever gets me to where I want to be. And nice. that's the route I'm going. And I know ultimately you've <coughs> said in, in the past, sort of, your ultimate goal is to be a three-weight world champion. Yeah. Um, so start, starting at super middle, you've not fought super middle as of yet. No. Nope. You've been fighting at light heavyweight. Yeah. Um, but so sort of when do you think you're gonna sort of get in the super middle? Um, hopefully in the next few fights. Right. Okay. Hopefully in the next few fights I'll do super middle way. I can make it. I can do it. Yeah. Um. So in the next few fights, just start doing super middle. Maybe get a title at super middle. Yeah. Can see. Who are the role models in the sport apart from obviously the guys you you train with day in day out? I know you say you look up to like to Billy Joe. Yeah. All oh, them they've been there. They've done that. Growing up, who was your your role model in this game, who did you model yourself on? Who was your favourite fighter? My favourite fighter actually was a boxer from my amateur gym. Right, okay. Who I wanted to be. Right. His name's Kieran Smith. Kieran Smith. He's, I think it's super well the way he fights at now. Um, he just won WBC Silver. That was the person I wanted to be. No right. one else. Yeah. And he was the person I looked up to in boxing. Yeah. And I still look up to him, but it's it just goes from there, doesn't it? As a yeah, young boy yeah. growing up, that's the person I wanted to be as him. Yeah, it's, it's a funny thing because we were talking to Charlie Edwards and Sonny Edwards about this. They were on our podcast the other yeah. week and he said, literally Sonny said, his idol in boxing growing up was... Was his brother? Uh, yeah, his brother and like Bradley Skeets and, mm-hmm. and obviously people like that who were in the gym who yeah. were above him in the amateur game. Yeah. And I said, it's funny because, I mean, it was like that in our gym because we had the likes of Martin Murray training in our gym and everybody just wanted to be like Martin yeah. Murray. They, you know what I mean? Because yeah. you've got someone who's of such a talent and, and they're in the same gym. That's what I mean. Like, talent breeds talent. You can only thrive. Talent off breeds talent. Gym, it's yeah. Iron sharpens iron. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Growing up, uh, that was the person I wanted to be. Yeah. And me, through myself and my determination, I've become who I am today. Yeah. But growing up, that was the man I wanted to be. I didn't want to be anyone else. Yeah. It'll be the biggest thing that's going to happen in the boxing scene this year. Apart from you coming down super middle. But um, Tyson Fiori, Deontay Wilder, and me coming down to Cruiserweights, <laughs> if that ever happens. Yeah. <laughs> Which Willie doesn't think I could do, so I'll have to prove Willie wrong. Yeah. But um, Tyson Fiori, Wilder, they had the first fight. Yeah. Obviously, we're going to be looking at the rematch this <clears> year. How do you see the heavyweight division panning out this year? Um, if Wilder and Tyson fight again, which I don't think is going to happen. Right. Um, I don't think that's going to happen. Anything can happen in boxing, but I can't see that happening don't again. Don't think Wilder wants it. Not that there. I just don't think that will happen again. Right. Um. If it does, it's another hard, hard fight. Mm. One can punch, and one was a phenomenal boxer. Tyson Fury's the best heavyweight on the planet, and never has been on the planet. Mm. And in my eyes, inspired the whole world to mm. just know what that man can do. He's the best heavyweight to ever live, I think, for what he's come back and done. Mm. And pff, that man's he's a miracle man in my eyes. Mm. Don't unbelievable. It was phenomenal, and he's the greatest heavyweight on the planet. Beats Anthony Joshua, really tough fight again. Maybe with John Tay, we don't know. Mm. And there's not another heavyweight can touch him, definitely not. Right. Well, this was Boxing Guru with Willie Hutch. Make sure you uh, tune in. Uh, February, what date? Uh, 
23rd of February. 23rd of February. Arena. Arena. Yeah, BT Sport. BT Sport Box Nation. BT Sport Box Nation. All my fights are on TV. Anyone want to sponsor me? If you see this video, I'm here. <laughs> Support him, guys. Cheers, oh. man.